Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the Government Cheese. Today, we are going to look at how to fund our government contracts. That's right. How do we fund our government contracts? That's one of the most commonly asked questions I get is, Kev, I'm getting into government contracting, but I don't really have the money. How am I going to do this? How am I going to fund these contracts when I get awarded? So today, we're going to go over all of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break down a couple different ways to fund contracts and a couple different ways to fund different types of contracts okay so we're going to look at fulfillment and funding on a product-based contract we're also going to look at fulfillment and funding on service-based contracts and then we're going to look at some alternative funding sources all right without further ado let's jump right into it all right cool so let's start um by talking about products okay so one of the easiest and simplest ways to get into government contracting is by doing products. Selling products to the government is something that's super simple, doesn't require much effort, doesn't require much overhead, but it does require funding. So what I tell people in the beginning is if you're getting started and you don't have a lot of finances um, and you don't have you know big lines of credit, big credit cards, one of the best ways to get started with products is using net 30 accounts. OK, so there's a couple of different um, ways that you can go about this. There are a lot of companies out there that offer products and offer net 30 accounts. So I'm going to show you two examples of those right now. So one that we have up is going to be Uline. Uline is a company that a lot of people know about and they talk about when uh, building business credit. You'll see a lot of people uh, on a lot of videos you might watch and they'll talk about, okay, you need to build business credit. What you need to do is start with net 30 accounts and they'll tell you come to people like Uline, right? Well, that's great for building credit, but did you know you can also use Uline credit to sell to the government? All right, so it's very simple. Establishing credit with Uline is pretty straightforward. Uh, when you go through the invoice and checkout process, you're just simply going to ask them to give you 30 day terms um, for invoicing. And typically, they're going to approve most businesses. Now, what does Uline sell? So Uline sells a lot of different products, um, all different types. And a lot of these products that Uline sells, the government uses trash bags, toilet paper, paper towels, um, box cutters, envelopes. A lot of these products are things that you will see on SAM.gov being purchased daily. OK, so if you can find some of these products, then get an account with a company like Uline. You're able to essentially get good pricing from Uline, place your bid, have Uline deliver the goods directly to the government. When the government receives these products, you're able to put your invoice in. You put your invoice in, you'll get paid typically in less than 30 days because as a small business there's the prompt payment act okay if you get paid within 30 days you're able to make your payment to uline at the time when your payments due. i'll give you a quick example of a timeline of how this would work so say for example you go on sam.gov today you find a um, solicitation to provide let's say for example some toilet paper okay so we go on, we go on Sam.gov and we see that they need to purchase toilet paper today. They're going to let us know the specs on the toilet paper that they need to purchase and the quantity. OK, let's just say for numbers sake, we're going to keep it simple. One ply toilet paper, they need to get one case. So eighty eight dollars. So your price on that case is going to be eighty eight dollars. OK, you're going to add your markup, whatever you want. Say, let's say you mark it up to you know twelve dollars. So you sell that case to the government at one hundred dollars. OK. When you go through here, you're going to make your purchase from Ulan. Then you're going to have your shipping address as the address to the government entity that's being delivered. All right. The minute that your order is shipped from Ulan, you're on the clock for your payment. So that's day one of your 30 days. OK, typically you can get your orders delivered within seven days. So that means when the order gets delivered, you're at day seven because these things like this fall under micro purchases, you can get paid on government P card. So that's a purchase card. Essentially, the government's going to give you your credit card and you run that credit card. So if the government receives the product on day seven of your billing cycle from Uline, you invoice on day seven and say it takes another three days for you to receive the payment because you took a, a credit card. That's day 10 of your purchase. You're going to receive the money from the government on day 10 and you're going to pay Uline. 
Remember, your payment to Uline is not due till day 30, but you'll have the whole order delivered and paid for by day 10. The government's going to pay you $100. You send Uline the 88 and you make $12. And you continuously do this process, and now you're getting started in government contracting without having any money at all. All right? So, like I said, Uline is one example of a net 30 account. Another one of those is going to be Quill. We'll just talk about this since it automatically pops up. All right. So Quill is another one of these places where you can register for a net 30 account. And we see that when ordering with Quill with a new business account, they're automatically going to give you 20% savings for the first three months and net 30 day terms interest free. Same process. Place an order. Have that order delivered directly to the government. Government pays you. You pay you line. The great, I'm sorry, you pay Quill. The great thing about using somebody like Quill is they're giving you a 20% savings off of list price. That potentially could be an extra 20% of profit directly into your pocket. Or you can choose to discount the rate that you give it to the government at to make sure that you win. Okay, so if you're in a competitive bid space and the list price for something, for example, let's look at the type of products that uh, Quill offers. So we see that they offer a lot of office supplies, right? So let's go here and let's look at, for example, um, binders. All right. So say, for example, you find a solicitation from the government to buy these binders. The price for the binder online is $5.99. Okay. Let's just round up for easy numbers, say $6. So your normal bid price would be $6. You're going to get a 20% savings. So that's a $1.20 savings. So you're actually going to get this, um, binder for four dollars and eighty cents now on that 480 you can mark it up ten percent you can mark it back up twenty percent and sell it for six dollars or you can bid straight at six dollars with ten or twenty percent added that's totally up to you but the great part about it is that uline is going to give you a twenty percent discount on every order that potentially guys could be an extra twenty percent in your pocket all right process works same way you're going to place your order with with quill you're going to get your net 30 terms. You're going to deliver directly to the government. Um, and then, boom, you're going to get paid. They're even offering you free delivery on orders up to $25. So now you're saving even more money. All right. Now, mind you, using this strategy is on products. And this is using straight business credit. Um, and these are also great ways to build your business credit. So like I said, we're not using uh, Quill and Uline as a way to build business credit. We're looking at them as a way to provide products to the government. The bonus is we're also building business credit. All right, so that's uh, one way to finance your uh, based contracts using vendor terms. Another way to fund product-based contracts is a more traditional way, and that is by using business credit cards. You can go to most of your financial institutions and you can apply for a business credit card, even with a brand new business. Uh, you can do some searching online and get a list of uh, that have different criteria on business lending. I'm not going to get deep into business credit today, but just know that there are ways to get this with uh, bad or good credit. OK, there are a lot of different options in the marketplace today for credit. Um, I just happen to have Chase pull up because they have a lot of business credit card options, a lot of different things here. I love anytime I can find um, these credit cards that are offering you cash back. Why? That's more money in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? You spend $10,000, you get $1,000 cash back. That's money that's going right into your pocket. So I love the cash back cards. I love the zero APRs. I love the zero annual fees. All these things are great ways for you to um, put more money in your pocket. Another thing that I like is we love the airline cards. We love the travel cards, right? The travel cards are great. Why? Because you're earning points for travel every time you make a purchase. So if you're continuously using these credit cards to purchase um, and sell things to the government, you're getting more points. You take your vacation at the end of the year um, and you're not coming out of pocket. So traditional credit cards are a great way to uh, finance your contracts. You can use credit cards to finance your purchase based contracts and your service based contracts. All right. Depending on the limits that you get on your credit card, it's a great way to use these on products or service-based contracts. All right. One of the next ways we're going to talk about is a more traditional means of uh, funding and financing. And this is going to be through loan programs. Now, great thing about being in government contracting is that the SBA has a 
laundry list of loan programs that are available for small businesses. Um, where a lot of us are familiar with the 7A loans, the S Express loans, um, but this, these loans all down here, this whole second page, these are loans that a lot of people don't take part in. And today I'm going to talk about these two because these are two programs that a lot of people don't take part in. All right. So um, the SBA Veterans Advantage loan, great loan specifically for veterans. A uh, lot of advantages to this loan in addition to your normal SBA Express loan. Uh, so it's a really, really great program. If you are a veteran, definitely want to take advantage of this. My personal favorite SBA loan product is this one, the Cap Line Program. The reason why I love the Cap Line Program is this program is specifically created for government contractors. This is created for people that do our business that are looking for a way to finance their contracts, okay? As you can see right here. So if you get a government contract and you need to finance that contract, you can take that contract to a bank and you can apply for an SBA cap line. They will give you the funding for that contract for all costs excluding profit. So that means if just for numbers sake, you've got a contract for $100,000 and you're working on a 20% profit margin. OK, so that's $20,000. The SBA will give you a cap line for $80,000 so you can go get the contract done. Then once you complete and you build the, the government, you're going to get paid your full $100,000. You're going to pay the SBA off the eighty dollars that you owe. And then you're going to put your $20,000 of profit in your pocket. This program is something that I, I, I promise you 80% of people doing government contracting don't even know that this program exists. Um, it's an amazing program. You can even do uh, lines of credit and working capital lines up to $5 million. Uh, so it is great. And um, you can also get multiple lines. You can get them per contract. There's a lot of different things that you can do with the cap line program. So if you're serious about getting a government contract, then I highly, highly, highly suggest that you take some time to learn about the cap line program, that you find a local lender that can do cap lines for you um, and you utilize this program because this is going to help you get your larger contracts done. All right. Um, in addition to SBA financing, you can always, always, always go directly to a bank um, like Chase and you can look at getting um, just straight small business loans so you can go to a bank like chase um, you can go to their business solutions and then you can apply for just a straight up um, business loan or line of credit like i said very very traditional option you can just do it the straight up way right so you can get a straight up small business loan anything like that traditional so this is going to be outside of the sba this is just going to be your normal traditional financing um, and your normal financing terms are going to apply. So, like I said, if you're doing your service-based contracts, you know, you can go straight to somebody like Chase and get a normal small business loan, or you can go directly to the SBA and get a 7A loan, or as I would suggest, a cap line that is primarily used for contract costs. All right. So, so far, I've given you a couple different ways to do things. So, we looked at product-based contracts and how to serve, um, fund those using net 30 accounts, how to uh, fund those using credit cards. We've looked at service-based contracts and how to utilize SBA funding to uh, handle those and then also traditional funding. Now, one, the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is going to be alternative funding sources. So, in government contracting, there are a lot of companies out there that offer you alternative funding. This company right here, Republic Capital Access, happens to be one that uh, we use and some of our partners use. I'm not affiliated with Republic Capital Access in any way, but I know that they do this type of stuff. They specifically do for government contracts. They only work with government contractors and they only fund and finance government contracts. Um, but they are an alternate means of funding. So meaning it's not going to be credit based. It's not going to be anything like that. It's just going to be strictly based on the contract that you have. 
They can offer you working capital, uh, financial commitment letters, and even mobilization funding. This is big if you get a contract and you need the money to get started, you can go to them to get the money. I'm gonna show you some of the different solutions that they have. Uh, real quick, not to get too deep into it, but essentially what they'll do is, if you get a contract and you need to get started and you have not billed for anything, but you have work that needs to get done, they're able to advance you up to 80%. Um, and then once you've actually done the work and you need to get your invoice finance, you can get financing of up to 90%. So this is a great way for you to um, get your government contracts done without having to come up with a lot of that upfront money um, and not having the stellar credit to be able to go to possibly a Chase or a Wells Fargo Bank of America and get a regular loan or go to the SBA and get one of their products. This is a great resource because this is going to be strictly based on the contract itself. Now, one thing I'll tell you about using alternative funding um, is that you have to make sure that you priced your contract properly because it is a little bit higher of a cost to do business than traditional uh, funding. So you just got to make sure that you have those costs covered in your contract because nobody wants to do something in the red. All right. All right, guys. Thank you once again for tuning in with us. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. If this helps you anyway, go ahead and drop a comment. Send it to five people. Let them know what we're doing over here. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Peace.